In this video, we're going to unpack the creation of the world, Genesis, how it all began, and how science not only is not at odds with the Torah, but actually science proves God. Let's dive in. The irony is the question is really a non-starter. Science has, in fact, discovered God. And you can talk to the hardline atheists and they will say, it looks like science has indeed discovered God. And how would that be? Interestingly enough, even within traditional Judaism, there is sufficient evidence to point that the world would be 15,600,000 years old. We'll get into that later. For now, let's look at Dr. Gerald Schroeder. Introduce himself, please. My name is Gerald Schroeder. I have, I have a, thank God, a strong science background from MIT, Master's Institute of Technology, Bachelor's, Master's, PhD, seven years in the physics staff, seen a whole range of atomic bombs detonated, moved to Israel, met my wife, Barbara Sofer, a great writer. And one of the questions is a, that I'm asked as a scientist is how can a scientist really believe that there's something that we refer to usually as God? You see, what Dr. Gerald Schroeder is referring to is something that's known as the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe. WMAP, the initials for, for a satellite. It's a diagram that shows the development of the universe from the creation over time. It's a timeline. Every word on that diagram comes from the NASA site. It is the condensed knowledge of the scientific community of how the universe created and how it got to where we are today. Each of the lines, the vertical lines, is another billion years. So there you have the scientific definition, which we'll get into just a little bit. But before we do that, let's help define what is the Torah? What is the Jewish definition of God? Let's go. The definition of the biblical God is predates time, outside of time. God is not a physical being, is, is a force, and it creates the universe. You'll notice that the opening chapter of Genesis, the only name for God is Elohim, God as manifest in the universe. Science has indeed discovered the biblical God. Okay, so now we get to the part where Dr. Schroeder is going to connect the dots, and we're going to finally understand what he means when science proves God. Have a look. Now, the black in the diagram is nothing. It's not a vacuum. Vacuums are within that diagram, within that cone of expansion. Back vacuums are empty space, and space is something. The black of the paper around the diagram is nothing. It doesn't fit in our human brain because humans think in a box, a box made of time, space, and matter slash energy. No human, as clever as they might be, as expansive as they might be, thinks out of that box. So when we say outside that diagram is nothing, we can use the words, but we can't conceive of nothing. It doesn't fit in the human brain. You see, the whole idea of Genesis is that something can come from nothing. And what does science have to say? What's the word that the scientists, the WMAP, what do they call this nothing? Let's take a look. Okay, you start from a burst of energy at the extreme left side of the diagram, and you end up at the far end with the oval. The oval is to indicate expansion in all directions, of course, because it's a timeline. We can't show that on, on a single piece of paper. We see here, most amazingly, that on the extreme left edge, it shows a beginning to the universe. Now, go back less than 50 years. If I were teaching that at Tech, I might have, you know, a person could lose tenure saying that there was a creation of the universe. It sounds like it's Bible. Because less than 50 years ago, the overwhelming scientific opinion was the universe is eternal. There was never a beginning. The Bible is wrong from the very first sentence. And then we discovered, suddenly, Arno Penzies and Robert Wilson, the Bell Labs in New Jersey, the northeast of the U.S., discovered the echo of the Big Bang, the energy left over, which George Gamow, 60 years ago, predicted that if there had been a universe created hot and small, it would have exploded, and the energy would get more and more dilute. And, the, and Penzias and Wilson, these Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, discover this energy that had been predicted overnight. The Bible got it right. There was a beginning to the universe. So now let's get back to Rabbi Arya Kaplan's book called Resurrection and the Age of the Universe. You see, the age of the universe, although today we count 5, 7, 8, 6, there's an opinion that the world is 42,000 years. And Rav Yitzhak of, of Akko, Rav Isaac of Akko, 
who was a student of the Ramban, who, year, who lived in the 13th century, writes that if we multiply 42,000 by 365,000, we end up with 15.3 billion years. So we have a source that's way before all of the estimates of today, showing that there is probability within Jewish tradition for a 15 plus billion years old universe. Let's take a look at the next clip where Rabbi Gerald Schroeder, yes, he's a rabbi as well. He teaches at Eishat Torah, uh, uh, recorded this video around 15 years ago. Let's take a look. Is there a God or not? Notice that the creation force isn't the three-letter word G-O-D. If you look at the words carefully, it's a quantum fluctuations. That understanding was first brought down by Ed Tryron, brilliant human being, in the journal Nature almost 40, 50 year, 40 years ago. The universe allows creation of something from nothing, provided you have the laws of nature, the quantum fluctuation. Tryron realized, and he published in the journal Nature, one of the two leading peer-reviewed journals in the world, that you can create something from absolute nothing, provided you've got the laws of nature, quantum physics and the laws of relativity, in other words, the laws of nature. So something can be created from nothing. And that's what Genesis talks about. It starts by telling us that in the beginning, there was nothing. Now, like we said, nothing can't be understood simply. But the Torah and Talmud do tell us about things that were created before creation. For instance, Olam Haba was created, the future world was created before this world. And this world is just a path to the next world. Secondly, we also say that Gan Eden and Gehenum, both heaven and hell, were created before the universe. But before everything came tshuva, repentance. And before that came the Torah. So in order to have the Torah, we need to have repentance. And repentance is the beginning of everything. It's the ability to go back on Shabbat, to be able to return after six days of creation and to come to a place of resting, to be able to make kiddush on wine from Eretz Yisrael, to be able to make three meals, which God said we should make three meals on Shabbat. Now let's take a look at the final chapter of Dr. Gerald Schroeder. Have a look. So look what science has discovered. We can create the universe from absolute nothing, provided we have the, the, the forces of nature. Now the laws of nature, the forces of nature aren't physical, they act on the physical. So if they create the universe, that means they predate the universe. So now we have a set of forces, we call them the laws of nature, that are not physical, that are able to act on the physical, they create the physical from absolute nothing. And they predate the universe, which means they predate our understanding of time. Put that together, it sounds very familiar. If you haven't noticed it, that's the biblical definition of God. The definition of the biblical God is predates time, outside of time. God is not a physical being, is, is a force, and it creates the universe. You'll notice that the opening chapter of Genesis, the only name for God is Elohim, God as manifest in the universe. Science has indeed discovered the biblical God. Well, we just need one part left, crucial, that which created the universe is also active in the universe itself. The very fact that you're watching this now pretty much establishes that point. Wow. So Dr. Gerald Schroeder, look him up. Um, he lives in Jerusalem. I will be doing a follow-up video on this. There will be a second video which will actually be dealing with the second topic, which is, yes, there must be a beginning. There is a genesis. But is there a purposeful God? Is there a loving God? Is there a God who's involved with us intimately on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, minute by minute, case by case? Stick with me. If you like this content, please subscribe, like, share, or comment. I read the comments and together we can grow. Have a great Shabbos and thank you for listening.